afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Coming today, it's by the rain, but rain is always good because it brings a great uh, benefit for the nature. And today, uh, we will have a very interesting even event. And my name is Khaldun Azhari. I'm the former president of this club, and I am a member of PAC committee, professional activities committees that host and uh, organize such a press conference. Today, uh, we have a very, uh, very important case and uh, very important speakers. Uh, I think it is, it's rare to have such uh, event. And uh, our guest will talk about uh, an issue of a hostile, similar to hostile takeover by a foreign company to a Japanese core company, which some people think it might uh, impact the national security or techn technological ability. And uh, th this case is now raised by the former uh, chairman and uh, former and uh, possible candidates for the board of uh, Fujitech company. Uh, let me first introduce my guest first. We start with Mr. Taka, uh, Takakazu uh, uh, Uchiyama. He is a former chairman of uh, Fujitech uh, Company Limited. Of course, uh, chairman keeps the title forever, uh, so we, he might come back soon. Who never, we never know. And also, uh, Mr. Uh, Kazu Yoshi uh, Kimura, uh, Mr. Kenji uh, Unenishi, and Mr. Uh, Hiroki uh, Okimoto, uh, outside directors, uh, candidates for Fujitsu, Fujit, uh, Fujitech Company Limited. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hiroki Kawai, attorney of law, attorney at law, he's, uh, he, he comes here often to uh, represent cases. Very well, activist. I see him sometimes in demonstrations near the Tokyo court, so he is very well known, and uh, maybe he will add uh, value to our discussion today. Shareholder activi activism is a hot topic in corporate Japan, and the uh, milestone was uh, reached this year when uh, overseas uh, fund OSIS management won board seats of 75 year old uh, elevator maker Fujitech company and ousted the, its chairman and founding family. And uh, lo a lawyer uh, for uh, Uchi Maya uh, de declared uh, uh, it a foreign hijacking of a Japanese manufacturer. Activists uh, say these companies are necessary to safeguard shareholders' rights and uh, uh, unlock uh, corporate value, while others have different opinion. Uh, then today we will have uh, the discussion about this. The team will tell us what's their case and what's their hopes and the lawyer will explain how they could win this case. And please, ladies and gentlemen, turn your uh, mobile phone into the uh, silent mode, and we will have discussion or uh, presentations for about uh, 20 to 25 minutes, after which we will have a Q&A. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest speakers. Thank you. Distinguished members of FCCJ, I would like to thank all of you for gathering and attending this press conference to explain our shareholders' proposal regarding Fujitech. I have submitted the shareholders' proposal I'm the representative of Uchiyama International. My name is Takakazu Uchiyama. Our company currently holds about 10% of Fujitech shares, including relevant subsidiary companies. This company has 75 years of history since its establishment. This company is the only manufacturer of elevator machinery in Japan. We have been producing elevators and escalators and for over 20 years and 30 years, a long-term period, Fujitech provides maintenance to these machines. Our wish is to normalize the management of this company and that is the reason behind why we are making this proposal as shareholders. The current board meeting is only looking 
to the perspective of a specific shareholder, they have lost autonomy. It is a grave concern when it comes to the situation of the board. One of the major pillar of today's proposal is the independent or outside board member candidates. There are eight of them. All eight are completely independent of our own company. They have their own insights and experience. They have the capacity and are qualified to bring Tech back to a normal situation. Today, including the members on stage, five of the candidates are here at this press conference. At the venue, in the audience, we do have the candidates for our outside board members. Uh, there's Mr. Kotegawa and Mr. Nishikawa present today. As you might have guessed, the current situation of Hujitek cannot be called normal. Now, I do see that part of the responsibility might lie with me that I did not oppose or rebut appropriately to the things that had occurred. And last year, immediately after the general shareholders meeting, I have accepted the post of the chairman. It was per request of the company, but I have made a mistake in my judgment, and I regret this deeply. To the shareholders and 10,683 employees around the world, I would like to extend my heartfelt apologies to you all. I have been the president of Fujitech for a very long time. During my tenure, I have engaged in various dialogue with investments funds from within and outside of Japan. I have heard very constructive opinion with an eye on growth for Fujitech, and I have taken heed of such advice and used it in my management on various occasions. The funds would say, good job, good company, on many different occasions. However, when you look to our Fujitech's long-term business model, this is a completely opposite as a business model. It is short-term, nearsighted, and it is for the purpose of selling out for gains in a, such a short term. This is what the Oasis management is doing, and they are controlling the board, and this goes beyond a single shareholder's rights. There is excessive involvement by the shareholder, and it is causing a governance issue to the company. In addition, Oasis claims that I use the employees to take care of my garden at home and also had the company pay for my son's tuition. They have fabricated parts of the private life of myself and my family. They are disseminating falsified information. And for this point, I have already filed a lawsuit for damages. Oasis. In the United States and in Hong Kong, outside of Japan and overseas, are currently being subjected to penalties for short selling and other practices. And that is the nature of Oasis. And this Oasis has already made reference um, in its interview uh, dated. April 18, 2023, in the Nikkei Shimbun newspaper and other media sources that they have intending to sell Fujitech. The CIO, Seth Fisher, said that if there is a proposal for acquisition towards Fujitech, um, Oasis will openly consider that possibility. In other words, this suggests that they are keen to quickly sell off the company. Now, in regards to M&A, it is something that careful consideration should be given to both social impact and 
the, whether it benefits uh, the corporate value of Fujitech. As you know, elevators, they are being delivered to a number of significant facilities, both public and private. And the building system is connected digitally, uh, meaning uh, that uh, there could be risks pertaining to economic security. At the same time, it could pose privacy risks due to the use of face recognition systems and surveillance cameras. This is a business which also requires social credibility. If the board were to be unstable, and amidst the concerns expressed by the employees and our suppliers, to make carelessly such statements without giving due consideration to its social impact is something uh, extremely worrying to me. And the government, I'm sure, is keeping a very close eye on this development, I hear. Now, I'm going into today's topic, Fujitech, and its customers and users. I believe um, they think the company is in a state of crisis. In order to break away from this state, it is necessary for Fujitech that our shareholders' proposals be approved. The proposals that we are making are not designed for the founding family to try to regain management control of the company. In fact, if you look at uh, the list of candidates uh, of the outside directors, you will not see my name appear amongst the eight names listed there. I myself uh, feel a strong sense of crisis towards Fujitech, and likewise, the incumbent employees and the ex-employees are also expressing concern, anxiety to me directly. And these ex-employees and incumbent employees and Fujitech customers are supporting us, saying that the shareholders' proposals that we are raising will bring the situation back to normal. Now, um, to the reporters at FCCJ, uh, I would like once again for you to understand uh, the intention of our shareholders' proposal so as to bring Fujitech back to normal. This is not just an issue of one single company, Fujitech. No. Elevators, escalators have a very strong public nature. It's a very important mobility device. So I want to take this opportunity to tell you the facts so that we can normalize Fujitech's management and bring about safety and security to elevators that are used every day by many people and to restore the true shareholders' value. Now I would like to call upon uh, the uh, directors, direct candidates who have ex supported our proposals and have expressed the intention to support us. Um, they will take the floor, beginning with Mr. Okimoto, please. Thank you. My name is Okimoto, and I would like to keep this short about briefing you on the proposal made by the shareholders. The detail has been already released via press release, so I'd just like to share the background and key points. So I will skip this page about the background, and if you could go to page 5 on the English version of the handouts, I think this would show you the major um, outline. So there are eight individuals as candidates for directors, including the three of us up here. And given the existing independent outside directors of Fujitech, I would have to say this with humble 
a humility, but we believe that independence, skills, ca capacity, all the uh, candidates are much better and competent compared to the current board members. And also realization of high events compared to what the company currently prepares, we promise a higher dividend. Third point, regarding the general interest of all sh shareholders, we will establish a corporate governance based for their interest. Changes of articles of incorporations and amendments are things that we have been proposing to ensure this. So the shareholder proposal, the reason behind this, if we could go back to page three of the English document. First of all, since February, the board members who have taken the positions at the company side the business strategy has not been shared at all from the company. The changes in directors, they are just meddling with HR, executive HR. That's all what they're doing. That's one thing. And from what we see, they are, the board is being controlled by Oasis at their will. And on our homepage, we have explained this extensively. But Oasis is ordering the board in a very impolite manner. And the current board members have no, just agreed and follow their instructions. This is very problematic. An outside independent director's role, the independence for the interest of all shareholders. This is the intent and resolve all the candidates share in front of you today. So we would like to ask the shareholders give us uh, that power to conduct the business. And as Mr. Uchiyama mentioned, Oasis, Fujitech is an important company based on economic security perspective, but Oasis is intending on selling the company off. Now, we don't oppose the action or the act of selling a company, but we are concerned about what that entails, a stable management and a stable proportion of shareholding is important. And we agree with the spirit, and that is the reason why we have agreed to sign on to this proposal. So. Given the independence issue of the existing board members at the Q&A, I would be happy to respond. And Mr. Kimura, I'm sure, could brief you on this more. So I will not repeat that at this moment. But having said that, I would like to repeat this point. All of the candidates here, we are here. We don't say that all activist funds are evil. Yes, there are some mistakes. Fujitech, we have retained earnings too much internally. We were not able to respond to the capital market demands. I personally believe so. But in a positive manner, maybe Oasis did shake things up so that we come to realize this. But having said that, at the end of the document we've provided, Oasis, it's not only about Fujitech other target companies that they've invested, the acts that they have conducted themselves or involved themselves in, please look at the performances of the target companies they've invested. It's not only Oasis. All shareholders, all stakeholders, it is not in their interest at all. So what Oasis is doing is not necessarily correct in the case of Fujitech. As the former chairman, Mr. Uchiyama, said, it exposed the privacy of an individual and engaged in disinformation campaign with falsified information. Now, this is a business, and it should be fought in the arena of business and not outside of business. So shame on you, Oasis, is what I would like to say. So in this specific case, what Oasis is doing is not acceptable at all. And also to enhance the corporate value, we do not see that Oasis is making effort or discussing uh, those issues and making effort. 
we are very skeptical about the current board in these respects. And this is the reason for this proposal. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you. I am Kimura, one of the candidates of the Independent Outside Director. I would like to share with you my motive and objective. There are three points. The first point, I had empathy and I agree with the shareholder proposal. Clients, business partners, executives, former employees, labor unions and employees are all voicing their concerns. Now, with the responsibility as the management who was at the helm of the company, Mr. Gemma is not looking to come back to management. He just wants to normalize the business management to aim and be positioned for further growth. And from that strong commitment from Uchiyama-san, I agree with that, so I agreed with the proposal. Second point. If we are to aim for further growth, I have major concern with the current board of directors of Fujitech. At the extraordinary general meeting of the shareholders, there has been very severe judgment handed down. Now, from a specific shareholder's proposals, there were four independent directors selected. Immediately after the extraordinary session, uh, there was one um, independent director on the company side who escaped dismissal, who defected to their side. So the specific shareholder now enjoys a majority. And ever since, any internal director's opinion or the auditor's opinions are ignored, and they are just trailblazing and strongly adopting any proposals that are made. So there is ambiguity that remains in this process, and the employees are having major concerns, and the business partners as well. There is no dialogue or no buy-in. The management need to be independent from specific shareholders. That is the basics of a governance in running a board of directors. Third point, from such concerns, the board of directors must be fair and engage in open debate, not removing people of diverging views of those who oppose specific positions. So we should, I would make all out efforts to normalize the board of directors where people can face each other of different opinions face to face. And the employees are having major anxieties while the company system is changing dramatically. So I hope to be proactive and engaging dialogue with all stakeholders, including the shareholders, than ever before. Now, the major mission is to have a robust and sustainable growth. This is a business challenge. And for strategizing this, we need to re resume such active engagement and initiatives towards growth. What's important here is to the engage in dialogue with Fujitech employees who are the major drivers of bringing this great strategy for growth. We want to have a buy-in by the employees and have empathy from them. We want to have a responsible board member to enhance the corporate value that will be re uh, reviewed and accepted by the market. And thank you very much. And one of the candidates, um, Uenishi Kenji, would like uh, to give an explanation. I, I believe uh, I will be explaining about um, Hujitek's uh, growth strategy later on. But first, allow me to introduce uh, very briefly my background and personal experience. I have experience of leading 14 countries, achieving a s annual sales of 600 billion, and serving as a president for six years at the GE Energy Asia Pacific. Over the six years that I served as president, we have seen a sales growth rate of 50%. That is my track record. And the next number I'd like to present to you is uh, the 1 trillion yen global supply chain system. And when I was a senior executive director of Lixil, I led the building of this system. And if I may add, I um, was an engineer 
and um, I have acquired a PhD in engineering. I'm developing aero engines. And now allow me uh, to talk about the growth strategy direction of Fuji Tech. Uh, we are considering four pillars for growth. First is the top line growth. In other words, improving sales. And the second is the bottom line enhancement. In other words, the profit ratio improvement. And the third is uh, to emphasize technology innovation and pr pr develop products with competitiveness. And number four is to strengthen M&A and partnerships. These four pillars are regarded the growth strategy. These four pillars are common may sound as if they're common with other companies, but over the past 75 years, as an independent elevator manufacturer, Fujitech has uh, been able uh, to grow as the world's big four and is aiming to further grow with these four pillars. In the interest of time, let me just elaborate on one of the four pillars, that is the Asian market. Why are we focused on Asia? The elevator industry is said to be a 12 trillion yen market worldwide, of which the Asian market accounts for a 6 to 7 trillion yen. In other words, 55 to 65 to 70 percent of the total market. Also, globally, um, compared to the West, the Asian growth rate is significant. Fujitech is an Asian company, and as an Asian company, it has to win in its home market of Asia. In the Asian strategy, um, together with the Asian offices and the Hikone Big Wing head office engineers, we will improve communication and offer our customers customer support system which outperforms the competition. And for this purpose, uh, we will focus on global talent and human resources development of Asian local staffs. In the age of digitization, uh, we need to enhance the motivation of our employees and enhance the value of the company. And in this age and time of digital, um, a number of innovative startup companies are emerging in the elevator industry. And we believe that searching for potential partners, startup companies, and local companies are significant for a corporate strategy. Top line growth, bottom line enhancement, technical innovation, competitive product development, M&A partnership strengthening are the focuses of our strategy by which we want to realize sustainable growth. We want to offer corporate governance which will be committed to these four pillars. I believe that the eight candidates are committed to this strategy. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for your presentations. We'd like to open the floor uh, to your questions. Uh, if you have any question, please raise your hand and proceed to the either of the mics and state your name and affiliation first. Uh, who would like to take the first question? Okay, while you're thinking about it, let me just have clarifications. Uh, I heard uh, that Oasis plans to sell the Fujitech company off. So do you have more information about it? To whom uh, it's going to be sold? Is it to another big country in Asia, for example? Thank you. Hi. Hi. The other day, I think it was NHK, uh, there was some news reporting that they are considering selling it off. 
Regarding the country, uh, we have not heard anything. That's if my memory serves right. Uh, yes, question. All right. Do you plan? Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Please come to the mic and ask a question. Hmm? Imanaka from Sankei Shimbun newspaper. Thank you. A question to Mr. Uchiyama. First, well, in Japan, there are other major elevated companies, but as uh, the uh, moderator introduced, um, this is regarded as hijacking. Now, why was Fujitech targeted? Well, I don't know if I should say targeted, but what are your thoughts as to why Fujitech was targeted? And uh, Mr. Uchiyama, you mentioned economic security. And in the material that you gave us, um, it talks about um, the fact that Fujitech um, has supplied, installed 1,000 elevators to public buildings, government buildings. And what kind of technology are you fearful of um, being exported overseas? And why do you say that this is pertains to economic security risk? Well, um, about your question. Our company, well, we have a lot of retained earnings, and um, including governance as a company. Uh, we have a high payout ratio and to the investors. Uh, we are listening to their voices and have been running the company listening to the voices of investors. And I think uh, that this is one of the major characteristics or reasons why we were targeted. And um, about elevators, recently, as I mentioned in my speech, and the bell system, well, um, well, it's the same for escalators, uh, but um, well, digital, um, it, everything is digi digitally controlled. And therefore, um, the elevator in the building um, is positioned as such, and uh, operating elevators, um, all this um, can be monitored. Now, looking at the recent elevators, even with your smartphone, you can manage the operation. Um, so you can look at the status of each of the elevators. Uh, also, uh, there is a face recognition system and um, surveillance cameras. All these things are attached. Plus, uh, there is a safe net center. So for each of the elevators, uh, they are controlled in a single location. So including the government buildings and airports and also the Ministry of Defense and also the Self-Defense Force. So um, in all these locations, we have delivered our elevators. And if um, Fujitech were to be acquired by a foreign capital company, it would have a major impact on Japan's economic security, we believe. Well, um, if I may, um, Mr. Nishikawa is here as a candidate of outside director, and he is originally from the police agency, and also he has been seconded to the defense ministry. So may I ask uh, Mr. Nishikawa to add some comments? And thank you very much uh, for the introduction. I'm one of the candidates of the outside directors. My name is Nishikawa. Well, um, yes, I'm one of the candidates, and, and I am a candidate of an independent outside director. So um, it's difficult for me to make statements on this. Uh, but when it comes to national security, um, um, it's not really the number one issue here, but I think uh, that um, because um, there is a possibility of information outflow, uh, um, um, it has been regarded as a risk in various places. Um, and, but I myself um, at the cabinet office um, have been working on crisis management. And um, given this experience, and also um, more broadly, um, elevators or escalators, um, these 
uh, in modern time, if a problem were to occur, um, you have to think about how much impact it will have. Well, it might not be life-threatening, um, but um, there are high-rise buildings these days, and it will have major impacts on people's uh, life and um, bringing about great concern. So in the future, I think of that um, if things progress as is, um, it could pose a risk to national security. So this is a type of discussion that is underway, um, starting to be seen in different parts. Um, and um, just like, um, well, is it as urgent as a rocket um, flying over Japan? No, it's not that urgent an issue. But thinking about the future, I think uh, that this is something that we have to attach importance to. And I myself, um, if I may, I have an engineering background. And uh, I've been doing urban planning. And, and one of the points of interest was um, aging of society and also um, trying to enhance the safety security of regional communities and um, escalators and elevators I think um, uh, will may play a major role in people's daily lives considering these developments so we want to have a secure situation in place and um, so that people can feel safe and secure. And uh, that is the reason why uh, when I was asked to, um, I was accepted to become a candidate of an outside director. Thank you. Yes, please. Asashima. My name is Nakamura from Asahi Shimbun. I have three questions. So, uh, Kimoto-san, you said first that um, Oasis has been instructing the board of directors. If you have any specifics that you could share, please do so. That's the first. And second, this was Uesh Uchiyama-san or Uenishi-san, if I could ask. the. If the proposal is passed, how would you? You did mention the intent for the management of Fujitech. What was lacking in Fujitech up until now? It was management. And what are the areas you would like to reinforce? Can you give us some direction and more specifics? Now, third is. Um, of course, among the information disclosed from Fujitech, the third party committee has concluded, or the, the company has concluded that Uchiyama-san has not been cooperative. But you also maintain that you were cooperative, or if you had an intent in not being cooperating to the investigation by the third party committee, please tell us what is the situation on that point. Well, thank you. From Okimoto, I would like to answer the first question. What kind of instructions were made from OASIS to the board of directors? Um, I do have the ha um, information here, but uh, Free Fuji Tech is the website. The information is there. And also in the handout, if you could go to page 21 of the Japanese version. Uh, there is a letter from Oasis, and if you could look at that, I do have that here, but so this is all the demands on the left side. We They have made a request and demand, and if you look at it, it is a very impolite manner, language that they use, as if they're ordering the board of directors. Like, you must sever any ties with Mr. Uchiyama, the chair of the board, etc., etc. There are eight items on this wish list or letter, and everything has been conducted and executed based on that. As for the, the deliberation that took place in the meeting, we don't know about that. But everything has been accepted and executed per this request letter. And it is always been an emergency motion, so it was done in haste, and people are not being in well informed to make informed decisions. So I cannot imagine that this is a true board and how a board should behave. Now, in addition to that, as in the news reporting we have heard, 
uh, that unanimously they have agreed on um, the severing of or the third party meeting and maybe 10 days later they disclosed that information so we were not informed so the independent board members who are have been sharing that information prior to any decisions or anything happening with Oasis that's what I would like to say and I'm, let me add something Oasis they have 17 percent shareholding and a shareholder with 17 percent can actually through a motion or proposal for selecting a independent board members through this movement they are able to dominate and they're sharing information with a board that is a very dangerous and precarious situation that we should be concerned about and at the extraordinary um, shareholders meeting they were elected and it made sure that they were at an advantage even if it's slight but the basis for the decision of the other shareholders is that is the business dealings that the Fujitech company and the uh, the RPT that they had because the founding family it, they made this into a scandal, and that's a typical method um, the funds use about the related party transaction. And the, to the general public, it looks skeptical. It looks fishy. So they've been very crafty. They've crafted this message and campaign towards the founding family. And if you look at the attacks and claims they've made, there are no substantiation with data, so the facts are not there. It's just speculation. All of them are speculation. And if it's just speculation towards the founding family, and if you're trying to prove your innocence, this is not acceptable. This is the campaign and how you know it is well-crafted. And I go back to the basics. They're using a typical tactics by a fund. And the board's acceptance of our perception and understanding was not sufficient enough. They took that, they underestimated the power of Oasis. And so there were a lot of changes and that fed more skepticism toward the management and the founding families. So even if the shareholder only has 17%, they are dominant and controlling the board, and that is very problematic. Let me just say something. Um, I think there were two, the second question, or the third question, the third commi party committee, I think we will have more discussions, but let me elaborate a little bit and answer your second question. The future vision for management, if this uh, proposal passes, If I may add a little bit more, Fujitech, 65% of the sales is outside of Japan. Another is that 70% of the employees is non-Japanese. So it's outside of Japan. And if you think of future growth, of course, Japan is a viable market, but overseas is the source of growth. This is the main core of the growth of this company. So you have to have an overseas growth strategy. And how you foster talent of those non-Japanese employees, the executive directors, senior executive directors, there are none who are non-Japanese. Can we call this a global company? Uh, can we be competitive as a global company? I think this is one negative point based on my past experience. So what I think is that we have to tap into the global talent and foster future generations in the global talent pool. That's even more important and we need to focus on that even more than just product development. And let me go back to your question, Oasis, about the methodology of attacking the Uchiyama family. 
In a nutshell, even if I may be honest, Oasis is resorting to fake news. It is completely a fake news. A falsified information has been created and it is disseminated tenaciously to a broad audience. This is what they call campaign. It's a typical method they resort to. It's their jargon. When they say campaign, this is what they do, this information. And what I hear is that um, some are from Mossad, from Israel, going back four decades. They go to a background check of individuals, and they continue to make news and information to feed skepticism toward individuals. So that is a reality of the campaign that they have been turning on us. Now, if I may specific, the most easy to understand case, or what they call is important, the DOMS 104, the apartment in question, the real estate in question for the RPT. Now, 290 million yen was the price tag that the company bought this condominium. And the objective was in Tokyo, this person wanted to use this as a guest house for top sales. So this person in question used it as a guest house and actually delivered great results. They ha he or she enjoyed great growth in sales in the central part of Tokyo. But due to COVID, they were no longer able to have entertainment as a way of diplomacy or sales activities. So the role of this condominium in question was done. So with the price tag of 370 million yen, the Uchiyama-san bought it. So 80 million was penciled in as a profit for the company. But Mr. Sass is saying that that real estate cost 700 million yen and he only sold it for 370 million yen. So there is a loss of 300 and plus million yen to the company. But there are no evidence shown to support their case that that condominium costs 700 million yen and it doesn't cost that much. And our side we have taken two estimates from different companies and we bought it at the optimal or appropriate price range as a company. So the sales department used this condominium and contributed greatly to sales and they had 70 million to 80 million profits from selling off the condominium to the family. The more important point here is regarding this transaction, this is among those who are of interest in the company, what is called the related party transaction. You need the approval from both the board and the board has been shared all information and it was approved and passed out the board member and the person in question had to be removed because he had a direct interest and the auditors also approved this and also the auditing firm had disclosed all of information and approved this practice. Tax authorities have been informed and they said there were no major issues with this transaction. They made no case of this at all. All necessary procedures were taken, but their claim is this condominium was supposed to cost 700 million, but they sold it for half the price and it is not acceptable. The general public can believe this talk. The gardener issue is another issue. So this was a part-time job, uh, a gardener who was working for the company. Outside of his work time, he got private assignment and got a private payment, no major practice issues or infringement of anything. And he had this old Fujitech uniform he just liked wearing when he was doing gardening. And his photo was taken by a third party. And now Mr. Uchiyama is supposedly have used his personnel for his personal purposes, which is not true. So all this disinformation that, and rather than us rebutting it doesn't end anywhere. So for 38 items, we have filed a lawsuit of defamation. And so the damages we are asking for is 1.7 billion yen or so. And rather than engaging in this fight, we would like to see a closure at the courts. 
and we are very confident that so we did file a suit. For this action does prove that he is innocent. If we had any um, doubts, we would not be filing. And so we made this lawsuit. And in regards to the third party committee, um, as you mentioned, as a lawyer, I must say uh, that the third party committee, and this is a private to private um, procedure. So um, trying to settle an argument, it's not an appropriate method. And uh, therefore, we have to delegate it to justice um, and have the court hand down a decision. That's what we actually did. And I think um, that um, in this case, um, it, because they're going after annual 10%, 20% yield, and also a, in a five-year exit. Um, so they're going after short-term interest, profit. And, um, and so these people who are very short-sighted and have this money at hand, um, they were looking for a good target. And um, they saw that we had a lot of internal, um, inter retained uh, profit, and we are a very serious manufacturer, and um, uh, the manager is a relatively easygoing person, and uh, that is why they targeted us. And they staged this scandal campaign to try to acquire the company. I think that's what happened. And I believe uh, that such cases, cases will continue uh, to occur. I think we're already seeing this. Uh, at, um, the AGM, you see that there are many, many such companies. At the end of um, June, uh, we are about to see, and then Bunka Shata is one of such examples, I think, in another um, annual general meetings, we'll see similar things happen. So um, these funds, which are going after short-term profit, um, these hawks, um, they are targeting Japanese companies. And, and um, this means that the Japanese manufacturing will follow out. And after they sell off the company at a high price, and the, the stock prices will plunge. And then um, uh, the, you will see uh, that the um, retained profit will disappear. So um, I really um, love this country, and I'm a patriot. And that is the reason why I may say this. Well, about um, the RPT, the related party transactions, allow me to add some explanation. Especially, as I said earlier briefly, um, fake news. Well, Oasis um, um, is um, trying to use fake news as a means uh, to stage a negative campaign via the media. Over the past year, even this year, after the at the beginning of this year, they say that I stole the company's money and at Manex Forum, and that is what they actually say. So um, I um, really cannot tolerate this anymore. And uh, that is the reason why I decided to file the law this lawsuit. Now, um, so disseminating fake news. Um, as I said, um, activists, I'm not really denying their presence, um, but the way they do it, their tactics are immoral. And uh, for example, um, including my family, um, if you were to experience the same thing that we experienced um, over the past year, how would you feel? For example, um, they introduced the house layout, and uh, they also look into the uh, registry of our family and have a detective follow us. And if they say that um, the route that I commute to the company has changed, so they try to disclose such information. And the same is true for my family. So they investigate everything and disclose the information uh, through social media. So this kind of thing is something that I feel very problematic morally. Because overseas, um, um, if uh, there is um, such um, families who are suffering from such things, they will not be tolerated. Um, using social media and other means. Um, if um, fake news were to be disseminated about yourself and your family, you really would feel that it's intolerable. Uh, so please understand that this is the case. I'm not trying to attack or deny activists, but there is a way of doing things. And also, about um, the R RPT, um, we've disclosed this in our website. And um, it's not the case where the founding family is in 
and cooperative. And um, well, uh, was it August 10th that they started? And at the end of December, um, uh, we were thinking that uh, they would continue, it, and because it did not end in January, February, at the board of directors, uh, we did um, resolve um, that um, the third party committee continue. But after the emergency um, shareholders meeting, it was terminated um, because um, free Fujitech. Um, in, in the free Fujitech uh, homepage, uh, we give a chronology of what has happened. So please view our website for the details. Uh, about the activists, um, um, we have Mr. Kotegawa, who has in-depth knowledge about activists. And um, he is also a candidate of the outside directors. So please. Hello, I am Kotegawa, and I took MEA at Stanford, and at the time I learned quite a lot. And when I applied this in practice, uh, this was, of course, when we established the industrial revitalization organization and initiatives here in Japan. So with people I work with, we wanted to make sure that the management resources, uh, we focus on the part that is profitable, and we realign and organize or discard the ones that are not making king profits. So that's the kind of uh, practice I've been involved in. And so I have been learning about Oasis, and that's exactly what they're claiming to do, to look at so focus on what is profitable and uh, non-profitable part is something to be carved out. So that's what I've been doing with the Industrial Revitalization Corporation as well. But that's what everybody says. But the reality of what Oasis has been doing in Japan and the target companies, what happened to them after the involvement of Oasis? Um, due to time constraint, I will not be able to share with you. But if you look at the handout, you see this green page, um, it's called the Oasis Management Company and on API Consultants, page 18, there is a detail. So if I may share a little bit of that, I think it should give you some idea. There is Katakura Kogyo and um, they had an employee of about 1,500. And in the past four years, one quarter of them had to leave the company. And this company, Katakura Kogyo or Katakura Industries, the owner uh, was the Kagoshima Higashi Indo Company. It was, it was this company was sold to this uh, company in Higashi Indo Gaisha. So what I'm trying to say here is, so again, this was a hijacking by Oasis, and they were trying to make this into a better company, but they focused on real estate and some key components and other mechanical and other engineering departments, they cut them off. But if you look at this document, when they were saying they will focus their resources on the textile, actually, they claim that they will focus on this textile business, but that is declining the most in profitability and sales. And um, this was the owner uh, who has this company or entity as a part of tax uh, invasion or tax benefit measures, so from Hikari Tsushin. So I thought that Oasis was about to do something good because the messaging seemed right. And I thought that the business performance would have improved. So I kept on looking at other investments Oasis made, but I could not find any of them. It was most unfortunate. Uh, because I was involved in Industrial Revitalization Corporation when we established this entity, and I had the cutting edge uh, information and knowledge experience from the United States and wanted to use this for Japan and Japanese companies, it makes me sad to see such a situation. One of Mr. Murakami Yoshiaki, uh, he went to the same high school as I did. He's a junior for me. And he became the first activist, uh, activist fund. And I did actually consult him a lot when he started his business. But if I look at what Oasis is doing, it's not the sheepskin of an activist, but green mailers or, furthermore, vulture fund. They're not even that. It's worse than that. It's more than that. I created a word. It is called the Mountain Leech Fund. 
You know how a leech in the mountains, they suck your blood, a blood of animals. So the animal becomes void of the blood and dies. That's exactly what they're doing to this company. Katakura Kogyo, uh, all the securities, marketable securities and real estate they had, they sold them off and they created the resources for payouts of dividends and they paid out the dividends and they actually sucked everything out. And now as for China, well, I think uh, that was the intention of your question, but um, 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 there are no specific um, information on third countries, uh, but um, Fujitech uh, from the past um, has um, this um, big factory in the capital of this big con um, country, and um, it is a general purpose t and technology, and there are some 200 plus uh, type technologies which are used for defense purposes. And that is the reason why there was this company which wanted to um, set up a joint venture with Fujitech. But Mr. Uchiyama, considering those risks that I explained, um, um, did not um, turn down that offer. But uh, recently, um, the, um, looking at the board members, the, the candidates uh, that have been announced, one, uh, was um, the head of uh, that Fujitech company in the big country. And the other is a uh, president of a foreign capital company. And this person also in that country um, has worked a long time. So looking at the lineup of the candidates that they come up with, came up with, um, it is of great concern to us. I think we have a chance for last question, please. Go ahead. Yes, please. NHK Shimai from NHK about activists. I have a question about activists. Well, um, though it was a campaign oasis uh, from last year, um, be it the candidates of um, directors and also um, um, they put a resolution to the shareholders meeting and it was passed, adopted, and um, as a result, um, you were dismissed. But um, so um, looking at the stock market um, of the past 10 years, um, I think um, through reform, um, foreign investors have come to invest in Japanese companies and um, so um, it's become easier for the shareholders to raise their voice. And um, the shareholders' proposals are being more uh, readily adopted or passed. But um, looking at it from Fujitech's point of view, um, the reform of the Japanese stock market, what do you think are the current issues that need to be addressed? What things need to be improved with the current Japanese stock market? And the second question, um, this is about Fujitech per se. Um, you say uh, that um, there is um, concern and discontent about the management of Fujitech amongst um, the employees, as well as your suppliers, uh, partners, um, and you're hearing such voices and you expressed your concern over China. But um, if this were to continue, uh, what kind of um, impact will it have on your business? So uh, where will you do you think of that you'll see a decline in sales? What cannot be developed? Can you be more specific as to what impact you are anticipating? Uh, let me answer the first question. Well, as um, um, you see from my CV, I worked in the capital market for a long time. And also as an outside director in Japan, I um, have um, um, served about 10 years uh, for the only um, listed um, securities uh, firm. So allow me to answer your question. Now, as you've mentioned, um, yes, um, um, activists, um, uh, those um, shareholders who voice their opinion, we call them activists, uh, but um, there are a variety of activists. Um, and um, so looking at uh, the AGMs, um, there are those which are making proposals for the business strategy per se, and others who are um, trying to to um, try to sell and buy and to, to get a big return. Um, so going after arbitrage. So there are different types of funds, though we say activists. So I don't think that they are sa the same across the board. However, having said that, um, in our capital market, as a person who was an insider, I think one thing that we have to reflect on um, is um, that the Japanese companies were lagging behind in that respect. And with these activists coming in, um, I, we say uh, that um, because there are such 
players in the market. And because they have uh, stirred and brought about this turmoil, um, the Japanese companies have started to brace themselves. And for example, the reallocation of capital, for example, um, the funds, um, the activists. Um, uh, they uh, say uh, that um, uh, there is an excessive asset and, um, and also retain profit, and this should be returned more to the investors or reinvested. So when it comes to capital allocation, the Japanese companies tended to be conservative, but they raised, they posed a question to that approach. Um, and as a result, uh, many companies started to feel this tension, and as a result, um, there are companies that have evolved. So are there, there are those positives um, that the activists have brought about, but specifically about Oasis. The Oasis itself, um, um, I personally do not think everything is bad about Oasis, uh, but for Fujitech, um, the, the fact um, that they um, have taken this uh, tactic and um, the uh, disseminated fake news and fabricated information, um, they have used these tactics um, so as to gain uh, control of the management. This is unfair, and I think uh, that we uh, should um, oppose this strongly and stand up to Oasis. So, um, as I said, um, um, it is important to have a sense of tension and uh, try to um, stimulate management. And uh, so not all activists are bad. And governance. Chikandis. Demo. Last, make final remarks, please. I'll be brief. So um, governance, again, um, uh, um, I think um, that um, the Japanese companies have been protected by stable shareholders in the past. Uh, so we uh, need to have think about um, governance more. And uh, activists have reminded of this. So this is a positive. And I think the Japanese companies have to reform in such a way. And in, related to the business, our clients and business partners and former employees and current employees, as well as executives, uh, we do have over 10,000 people within our group, and they are worried. And I keep on saying this, one board, one company, one Fujitech. That's been the slogan from top to bottom of the organization. There should be a good flow in managing the company and our clients and business partners. We have businesses over two decades and three decades. And in Tokyo as well, we have an accumulation of our history of two to three decades. So in mid to long term, uh, we do need to have a good business plan and strategy to be deployed in the market or else our business value will not be enhanced. With a short-term perspective, our company will always face problems. This is my uh, recognition of the situation. We reach the end, but I, I cannot help but ask this a very short question. What, what is the position of Ministry of Trade and Industry and Economy METI on, on your case? Can you give me in, in one word, do they support you or yes or no? Thank you. So METI position, I don't know. I am not aware. But recently, METI has announced, for example, regarding TOB, that the business management should not oppose just to protect their position. So uh, the liberalization of the Japanese market, uh, it's in relation to what the previous question. So that guideline has been established, and, and I do agree with that. But um, it's related to the previous question. But do we allow any kind of practice? Uh, as a measure against what's not going well, we have to think about the Japanese companies and make sure they are prepared. So for Google, they have the preferred stocks. And of course, the business management have the ones with the voting rights and those who do not have, just those who pursue profits and yields. So that's clearly defined as a separate type of um, shares. But uh, we don't have such a listed company in the Japanese stock market at this moment. So that's something to be considered for the future. That's just my personal opinion. Up, up. Our event today. Thank you very much for coming. All speakers, thank you very much for your uh, insights and coming here. And uh, we hope we hear more about this from you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, have a nice evening. But please, we, we have a press conference of Foreign Minister after like 50 minutes. So please uh, wrap up also the tables and leave. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.